Welcome, brave souls, to Fear File Chronicles, your one-way ticket to spine-chilling stories and terrifying tales. Tonight, we'll be diving into the darkest corners of the human mind with the story, The Soviet Union is Responsible for the Death of God, Part 1, penned by the twisted mind of South Park is cool. Together, we'll explore the unexplained and face our deepest fears. But before we begin, if you enjoy trembling in terror, be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your fellow fear fanatics, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell notification so you never miss an eerie episode. Your support truly means the world to us, so feel free to leave a comment below to join the Fear File Chronicles community. Now, without further ado, let's unravel the mysteries of the unknown together. As we delve into tonight's fear-inducing story, the Soviet Union is responsible for the death of God Part 1. Dim the lights and prepare yourself for a chilling journey into the Fear File Chronicles. My name is Artem Avalov. I never imagined I'd ever share this with anyone not privy to it already. In 1962, a major incident unfolded in the Nenets province of Russia. It remained hidden from the world thoroughly swept under the rug. I resolved to disclose this event to the public from my deathbed, freeing myself from any repercussions. I don't need to summarize my experience for you. I've maintained a journal, diligently recording every uncanny occurrence during those perplexing months. I've transcribed the relevant excerpts from my journal for your perusal. I need to clarify. I hold no resentment towards any religious beliefs just refrain from harming others merely due to their differing beliefs. If they're forced to defend themselves, they will. Without further ado, let's delve into it. Entry 1. The date is September 29th, 1962. I'm with a team of six, currently traversing towards an area southwest of Korai Vir. We're set to conduct one of the most consequential experiments since the Great Patriotic War. Our commander has meticulously planned this for months, and we won't let any error creep in. Entry 2. It's approximately 5 p.m. We're stationed in an area engulfed by trees. Snowfall drizzles around, causing me to shiver, even bundled in two layers of clothing. The experiment commences in five minutes. Anticipation and apprehension bubble within me. Opening portals is intimidating considering we're venturing into the unknown. I ponder whether America is also conducting similar experiments. If they are, I hope we're a step ahead. Entry 3. We've achieved it. When Abramov flipped the switch, the machines hummed, followed by the birth of a light between them. It was as if the air was paper and a light, a hole puncturing through. The portal is open now. It's an unprecedented sight. Entry 4. Our investigator, Gawkin, gingerly stepped into the portal. After about 10 seconds, he emerged, describing his experience. English translation. Green forests, dark objects gliding through the air. Sirens began blaring. But I returned before witnessing anything further. Before we could interrogate him further, a palpable presence permeated the air. I glanced at the portal. A gleaming white mist was seeping out ethereal, and transparent. I exchanged looks with my teammates, who were spellbound by the apparition. The energy radiating from the figure intensified, almost suffocating. Our commander ordered Abramov to seal the portal. Abramov flipped the switch. The portal began to contract instantly, trapping the mist, which fell onto the snow. The overwhelming presence subsided. The mist, writhing in the snow, gradually ceased its movements. Its lustrous sheen faded, its white hue turned to gray. Entry 5. We were clueless as to what the mist signified in its realm. Gawkin's description didn't shed much light. Sirens? Black objects floating in the sky? It seemed like Gawkin witnessed a reaction to some significant disruption. We questioned him about any possible markings or signs. He reported seeing nothing of the sort. No tanks no helicopters, nothing. We requested more details about the black objects. Before he could answer, 
a brilliant light appeared where the portal had closed. It expanded, replicating the portal's appearance. Inexplicably, the portal had reopened without our intervention. As we watched, baffled, a sinister creature emerged from the portal. It was a horrifying sight, a cluster of rotating rings adorned with eyes. The eyes glared menacingly, and the creature emitted a wet growl. Despite the biting cold, chills ran down my spine. I glanced at our commander. His face was etched with disgust, which swiftly morphed into fear. He withdrew a pistol and fired at the creature, to no avail. It continued to hover unperturbed. I couldn't resist pulling out my pistol and firing at the monster. It had no effect. However, I hoped it conveyed a clear message. The creature eventually receded back into the portal. We should have anticipated this. We had just stumbled upon a parallel world where such entities presumably existed. Abramov attempted to close the portal again, but it resisted. He tried once more, but it remained obstinate. Another being emerged from the portal. This time, it was a humanoid figure resembling a middle-aged man. What was unusual was the red glow enveloping him. His eyes bore a terrifying look of murderous fury. He stood before us and began to speak in a soft tone. Gentlemen, I'm speaking in a language you can understand so I can be as clear as possible. I don't know who you are, and neither does the ophanim we sent. But you need to understand, you've just triggered unprecedented chaos. We don't recognize you either, our commander retorted. But we do know you're an anomaly in our world. Is that so? I can't glean any information from your spirits, so I'll ask, was your action accidental? Pardon me? You know what you did. You are aware of the consequences of closing this portal. No, we are not. We had an unidentified misty figure intruding our world. We had to close it. Interesting. I mean, I'm just curious. Regardless, we'll take matters into our own hands. What are you trying to say? You killed Yahweh. That should say enough. I'll be back with the others soon, so prepare yourselves. This war will be a short one. He stepped back into the portal. Once he was gone, the portal closed by itself. His mention of Yahweh had me thinking of the biblical figure. He even mentioned an ophanim, a term I'd heard from a priest before. I wondered if the people in that parallel world used the naming conventions of the Bible. What did he mean by Yahweh? I asked the others. Gawkin brought up the Ophanim. He said he'd heard Christians describe something that sounded like the floating, rotating ring creature we had just seen. I chalked it up to coincidence. The idea we had actually killed God seemed unfathomable. Crazy. The alternate world's inhabitants probably just shared similar names, I reasoned. Gawkin approached the transparent gray substance, the supposed corpse of Yahweh, for a closer inspection. Entry 6. We took the substance to a lab and ran some tests. The results were shocking. The substance was made of a material we'd never seen, let alone discovered before. Entry 7. We've spent the last few days conducting experiments on this mystery material. We found a way to destroy it. This discovery is huge. If we did kill a mystical being and were about to fight a war against its comrades, we needed weapons that could give us the upper hand. The thought of being overpowered by these unknown entities fills me with dread, especially by that damn rotating bunch of wheels. I've committed myself to assist in creating weapons designed to destroy these otherworldly beings. I won't stop working until the weapons are ready for use. Entry 8. The weapons are ready. Backups have been assembled, just in case. Now we wait for our preparation time to run out. When the glowing man returns, we will be ready. Top Soviet commanders have been preparing the Red Army for war in a covert operation called Fighting Angels. However, I'm worried we don't know what those beings have in their arsenal. I can only hope our weapons are strong enough to at least incapacitate them. Entry 9. I was awakened by the shouts of my comrades at three in the morning. A comrade burst into my room, urging me to hurry. They've arrived! The war's begun! All their men glow! I grabbed the necessary artillery. Gunshots and sonic booms echoed from some distance away as I headed for the defense point. As I ran, 
Flashes of red and white lights off in the distance filled my vision. The cold air bit at my skin, but my blood was boiling with a mix of eagerness, adrenaline, and dread. A soldier ahead of me suddenly combusted into a white light. I ducked behind a nearby bush, scanning for any glowing men. One was approaching, shrouded in a deep red glow. I aimed and fired. The glowing man was torn to shreds, disappearing into the night. Our guns worked, but did we have enough ammunition? To avoid detection, our commanders decided we'd receive news via word of mouth. Deaths would be covered up. Any casualties would be cremated, then honored in secret at a later date. No records or broadcasts about the war were permitted. Civilians aware of the war were sworn to secrecy. Our commanders were doing their best to keep everything under wraps. Day one was chaotic. The glowing men were everywhere. Every couple of minutes, one or two of them would rush by. It was surreal seeing them torn apart by our bullets. I only had the chance to sleep sporadically. Despite trying to sleep in an underground cellar, I was too alert to truly rest. At times, I would nearly fall asleep, but then I'd hear a rustle and jolt awake again. This cycle continued for three weeks before things began to slow down. The glowing men started arriving in smaller groups, their expressions growing increasingly vengeful. All I could do was duck and hope for the best, killing these terrifying beings before they could kill me. Entry 10. Week 3, Day 5. A soldier approached me, exhaustion clear on his face. The glowing men are cornered. Our men are guarding the portal. They're shooting every glowing being that comes through. Entry 11. Week 4, Day 1. I woke up at 0400 to a strange wet growl. Gun in hand, I tiptoed to a spot beside the window. The growling sent chills down my spine. As it continued, I peeked out the window. My heart sank as I saw it floating under the lamplight. The wheels. The floating, rotating wheels. Covered with eyes. It hovered in place, ugly and monstrous, reflecting the lamplight. I fired, shattering my window. Steam rose from where the bullet hit the creature. But instead of falling, it started moving towards me. I fired again and took cover out of sight of the window. Steam seeped in through the shattered window. I took deep breaths, trying to calm my racing heart. In the dim light, I could see the creature's dark silhouette as it floated into the room. I fired again. The creature stopped, but I couldn't tell if it was damaged. My door creaked open and Soldier walked in. It was my brother. I watched as he combusted into a human-sized white flame, which briefly lit up the entire room and the wounded wheel creature. My heart dropped a second time. This thing can kill, take lives, my brother, gone in an instant. I fired three more shots at the creature. Finally, it combusted into a white flame, the heat almost burning my skin. When the flame died down, all that was left was fear. The glowing men were easy to kill but these wheel creatures required multiple shots that would drain our ammunition faster. Sleep is an impossibility right now. For the sake of my life, I'm too exhausted to transcribe more of the journal right now. I'll post more entries as soon as I've transcribed them. I won't be poisoned just yet, so I have time. Well, my friends, we've reached the end of tonight's chilling tale the Soviet Union is Responsible for the Death of God, Part 1, by the talented South Park is cool. I hope you've enjoyed our descent into darkness and that you'll carry a piece of the Fear File Chronicles with you as you drift into uneasy dreams. If our story left you shivering and shaking, don't forget to like this video, share it with others who crave a good scare, and subscribe to the Fear File Chronicles for more haunting horrors. Remember to hit the bell notification so you're always among the first to know when a new nightmare awaits. As always, we appreciate your support and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Sharing your fears and frights with us truly means a lot, so don't be shy to engage with our sinister community. Until next time, remember to embrace the darkness, for it is within the shadows that our most terrifying stories are born.
good night and stay scared. <laughs>